highly effective teachers. What does the research say about highly effective teachers? Here's an old but goodie, not to uh, diss Eric Hanushek, not that he's that old, but a highly effective teacher helps students learn the equivalent of a year and a half of learning in a single year, while a highly ineffective one imparts a half year of learning. Coincidentally, I also had a slide by Hanushek and Rivkin yesterday on principal effectiveness. Um, very noted researcher, and he happened to be in this building meeting with Dr. Smisco yesterday and Cecilia Oakley. And so I got a chance to stop by and we talked and um, he's actually gonna help Dallas ISD with some of its data and analyzing. Uh, we're so fortunate to have somebody like him helping us. William Sanders, most of you know that name. He's the value added fame. Students who have the misfortune of receiving ineffective teachers for three years in a row score as much as 50 percentile points lower in statewide assessments than those who benefited from a three-year string of effective teachers. One, of two, one or two years of ineffective teaching from a teacher can really damage a kid's chances for a great academic career. It's serious, and the data is there to support it. And then there's more research recently. This one also comes from the Equity and Excellence Commission report. And then later this, uh, later this morning, I'm going to talk about the MET study, uh, a study that Dallas participated in, uh, done by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. But the research is uh, pretty compelling, and it's more and more uh, recent research is confirming what other people have already known, like this. All students must have access to high quality instruction. To that end, states must re-examine and align their systems for recruiting, retaining, preparing, licensing, evaluating, and developing, and compensating effective teachers. You can read that. And here, I, I think I've talked about this before, but we have to figure out ways to place our most qualified or most effective teachers with the least proficient students. We have to figure that out. It should come as no surprise that the best teachers over time gravitate to more affluent schools with better pay and working conditions, and where children seem easier to teach because they come to school without the many overt challenges that children from poor families face. I know that's a generalization in the research, um, but it's a generalization for a reason. We have to figure out ways to get our most effective teachers with our least proficient kids. That doesn't mean there aren't some great teachers who choose to go in the hardest environment in order to serve kids. But as a generalization across our profession, it is the case that our least effective teachers are with our least proficient students in our profession. And the research bears that out. All right, so the real question is, how do you measure effectiveness? How do you differentiate? How do you do that when 98% of all teachers get proficient or above on their evaluation? How do you figure out who's effective and not effective? How do you move a teacher to the least effective schools? So I want you to think as if you're a teacher. So you're a teacher right now for the next few minutes. You're a teacher. Um, and I want you to answer this question. I am a blank teacher, and one would know that because. So if you say I'm a proficient teacher, how would, how would I know it? How would your colleague know it? How would anybody know that you're proficient? Just jot down three or four bullet points. How would one know that? If you're a progressing teacher, how would one know that? If you're a distinguished, exemplary teacher, how would one know that? Just jot down three or four bullets.
Okay, when you have your three or four boats, talk to your, your colleague about your three or four and compare it with his or hers.